this video, I'm going to show you how to set your camera up in Assetto Corsa Competition for maximum visibility, maximum control, and maximum immersion. Welcome back to the Game of Muscle YouTube channel. Click that like button and subscribe if you enjoy sim racing content. Okay, so uh, Assetto Corsa Competition, we've got the KTM here at Brands Hatch, and literally just on the track, it's for a single player race. Um, if I just go to drive, the race will begin. So this is literally what you get. If you were to just join in, you've just bought the DLC. This is the onboard view by default, uh, the dash view rather. And um, so what I recommend doing is personally, uh, with my single screen setup that I use, I always use the dash view in Assetto Corsa Competizione. Uh, in order to adjust this and get this correct, you need to just go to the dash view, then press escape, and then what we want to do is we want to go to the options. No, we don't. <laughs> we want to go to the view settings. What a fool. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Ignore the video. Go to the view settings. And firstly, I'm going to adjust the camera up here. I'm going to not change the lateral because that's left and right. We don't want that. We're going to move it forwards a bit. And then I'm going to reduce the field of view down to about 47 and uh, we're going to pitch the camera up a bit. Actually, do you know what? I might move it back a bit. The, you know, the thing is, you can do this. You can do field of view and stuff scientifically. But, um, to be honest, there's no real point in doing that. Because if you're playing on a monitor, it's uh, always going to look um, off from reality. Unless you're using a VR headset, it's never going to be literally one-to-one -one field of view. Uh, you, could use a, you could use a calculator to set it up, so technically it's the one-to-one the -one field of view, but you, the, you're looking out of a monitor that's tiny. It's never actually going to make perfect sense for, for what you'd see out of a real-world car dash. So the nice thing of using the uh, dash view like this at a sensible field of view, and what I would class as a sensible field of view is um, anything between 40 and 50 is, is generally going to be about right. As you can see, I'm using a 34-inch ultra-wide monitor. Um, the benefit of this is that my glorious Fanatec Podium DD, uh, use my Fanatec affiliate link if you buy one of these, appreciate that. <laughs> the glorious Fanatec, bloody shill, shill in a video. This uh, wheel, and this would be the case of using a Thrustmaster wheel or whatever, uh, or even if you're crazy and using a flight yoke to pretend you're driving a McLaren. The benefit of this is you've got the wheel lines up with uh, with the actual car in the game and it should kind of your real wheel should blend in with the simulator uh, much more than if you've got a if you're using the other view where you can actually see the in-car steering wheel this this will really help connect you to the sim and the car in the sim and it kind of it gives you the illusion that your wheel is actually part of the simulator um that's what i find that's my it's my preferred view if i'm driving on a single screen um Obviously, if you're in VR, you'll use the cockpit view and you'll be as if you're actually in the car. But if you've got a single monitor, dash view, set the camera up so you've got good visibility there. And then what you want to do is the dashboard display in HUD on. Now, you want to do that because that gives you a uh, little uh, dash on the screen, which I'll show you in a second. So uh, we'll just save that. Quit out of here. Uh, quit. Drive. Now we get the little uh, HUD here actually mirrored. It's what would normally be on the steering wheel. We now get that. So we can now, we've got really good visibility outside of the cockpit. We've got a really good field of view for, for it kind of lining up to what the field of view would be in real life. We've got the, combined with the visibility to make up the, for the fact that we're using a single screen monitor um, and the utility of the dash and everything. And you, you're basically set to go now as, as i am right here now actually looking at this i think i'll actually um i'm going to move the camera up a little bit higher the thing is again i think people get stuck a bit on going oh let's i, I want to set it up so it's realistic so i'm going to use a calculator because it makes me feel more secure in that it's more like reality Look, if you're playing on a monitor in a, in a, in a computer, on a sim rig and a sim, it's not reality, it's abstract. It's going to be a compromise to some extent. And as long as you don't get mental on the field of view settings, you know, whatever, whatever is more comfortable, gives you more vi visibility and allows you to enjoy playing the game, the better. Now, another advantage of uh, having the dash cam like this and, being, uh, and getting that visibility of the dash is... 
Um, it really allows you to see the um, the bonnet clearly and the relative movement of the bonnet over the road, which is a really good visual reference for um, for what's going on with the physics. It really makes it noticeable when the car's rotating a little bit and what sort of slip angle you've got, uh, or what sort of a uh, yaw. <laughs> this is not an aeroplane, but you know, it, it, it makes that visually more noticeable, that relative movement of the, the car to the actual road surface, which then allows you to notice if you're slipping more, uh, which is going to be more helpful if you've got, if, if your force feedback wheel's maybe a lower end force feedback wheel and you don't have as much detail through it. If you're using a direct drive wheel, you, you can feel that kind of stuff. And obviously, if you've got some kind of bonkers motion rig, you can feel it. But that is, you know, that is pretty much it in terms of my camera settings. I've just gone through every single car and uh, set them up in that, in that regard using this dash view. I tweak it a little bit here and there. You will have to use different settings depending on, like, where the A column is in the car. And you might want to pull the... You might want to move this move the view slightly further back you might want to move it slightly further forwards it doesn't really matter it's whatever you happen to enjoy um another good tip i would say though is as you can see in the middle of the screen i've got um the the heli course or the car radar on i would definitely turn that on uh it might look like we're playing tetris whilst driving gt4 cars i did that on purpose so you could uh, see um what happens if you drive into another car um, that is extremely useful having that there in the middle of the screen to know where cars are around you, especially online, to avoid crashing into people. And it even gives you a bit of warning for cars coming up behind. You'll also notice we have the Doritos at the side of the screen. You can't see it now because the cars have all gone. Um, I would turn that on. I mean, a lot of purists would be like, oh, that's not realistic. It's ruining the game. Um, you know, if you're racing online, you probably want all, all that you can get. And you will have noticed that I have the mirrors and, uh, and mirror actually turned off, which is ridiculous. I know I, I would in any other simulator, um, even F1 2020 now has a rear view mirror, amazing upgrade from the previous game. Um, I would always have the mirror on normally, but with a set of course of competition, um, it does impact frame rate quite substantially. So I... I would rather have other graphics turned up a bit more and no mirror. I mean, maybe if I was doing like a league race, I'd put the mirror on. But the uh, the car radar, to be honest, um, works for the most part. It could probably do with being a little bit more zoomed out uh, and that make up for having no mirror almost completely. But then also making sure you've just got a button ready bound so that you can quickly flash to the rear tends to actually be better than a mirror because it's, it's more of like a conscious effort. You're like, I'm going to quickly check behind me to make sure that I'm safe. Uh, from the impending dive bomb on T1. But uh, yeah, turn the mirror off if you're getting performance issues or if you've got a lower end PC or if you want to turn other graphics up um, because that is a bit of a problem with this game still. But that's uh, that's pretty much it, guys. It doesn't it doesn't get more simple than that. Um, I'm going to restart this. We're going to do... We're going to go for a race here and see how we go with this view. Um, I would say, whilst you're setting up cars, before joining online races... Um, I would definitely um, do offline with AI to check the camera, get it dialed in before you go to an online race because people generally get annoyed when you're fiddling with your camera angle whilst driving. <laughs> um, but also, um, if, especially with stuff like the mirror and setting other things up, setting the, a, a good number of AI on the screen will be a good, it'll put a good amount of load so you'll get an, an idea for your frame rate benchmark uh, while setting things up. Um, and if you're going to use the mirror or not, and, you know, everything else. Um, nothing's worse than joining an online... Like, you set everything up, maybe, maybe with no AI in hot lap mode, and then you go to an online server and there's it runs at 5 FPS because there's so many more cars on the screen. But here we go. Let's, let's give this a little bit of a race up the inside. I've got the AI now on 97% uh, difficulty and 100% um, aggression. I personally have found that 100% uh, aggression is good. They don't do anything too stupid. Um, for me, my, my skill level, uh, 97 is actually, I, I find sort of pretty much about my pace. Uh, if I 100% know a car on track, then 98 
if I don't know a tracking car, then probably like 95, 96, especially when it's down at the back, um, you'll know it's in a set of Corsair Crumpet Zone that um, as the AI finished the first lap, um, they spread out, so, and they start getting faster. So don't base your uh, difficulty on the first lap. <laughs> this KTM crossbow, absolute beast to handle. Um, I really should have turned the brake pressure down because this the KTM crossbow is a lot more slider. Let's put the uh, ABS up a bit. Um, it's got a very short wheelbase, so it's a really nimble car. Really fun to drive, but I would say uh, out of all the GT4 cars, this KTM crossbow is a, a proper tricky bicky. Look at that. Nice up the inside there. So I've got really good visibility with this camera angle here for the road surface underneath me, the cars around me, Heli Corsa, that, that car's pretty far back from us there, and you can still see him just on Heli Corsa. It's just called Car Radar in this, but it's a rip-off of Heli Corsa. So you really can make do without a mirror. Just about. I mean, you know, I'd rather have a mirror because there's those situations where T1 at like Nürburgring or most tracks where just being able to glance up the mirror you can you can sort of look at the mirror in your periphery whilst you're also looking forwards to make sure that you're not getting sandwiched like there's, there'll be times where you've got two cars either side of you uh, and their wheels are so, they're literally side by side but they're not enough that you can see either side um, I, I guess some people would say um, with this dash view one disadvantage of it compared to having a further back view is that you can't see out the windows um, but I would say, like, if you're using a proper or a lower field of view with a cockpit, you're going to uh, you're not going to be able to see out the windows anyway. And even in my case, with a 34, that's with a 34 curved ultra wide. Even when you get to like the 40 inch ultra wide, you still can't really see out the side windows. It's only if you've got a um, triple screen setup with the actual screens um, angled at the side that you could ever really see out of the windows. And even then, you can typically only see out of one of the windows. So I, I just think it's it's a better compromise, in my opinion. But by all means, guys, always do what you prefer. Don't... A lot of sim racers and a lot of people seem to get lost in this thing of, oh, what's the real world? What's the most real? What's the... It's a game. You're playing it as a game. You're not going to drive these cars in real life. You can't afford it. <laughs> you... I mean, use the... Best, best idea way of setting up. Use that as a reference by all means, but do what you prefer ultimately. Um, but as I say, I, I think I, as as an old fart that's played far too many driving sims for many years, this dash view with the screen, um, with the real wheel, with my real world uh, force feedback wheel as it is I, I just find this the most immersive most informative uh, most engaging you know I just get absolutely zo z zoned into the to the sim and you know for the looking left and right thing as well if you just bind look left and right you've got with the with the car radar you've got that as a warning and then if you really need to have a look and see if there's a Ukrainian supermodel overtaking you you can just use the look left and look right button my God, this car does not like that corner. My, my brake sensitivity is way too high. If you find yourself locking up, guys, even when you've put a lot of ABS on, try reducing the brake pressure in the car setup. And uh, that's a good tip for all simulators, to be honest. If you're locking the brakes up all the time, regardless if you're using a load cell or a potentiometer brake, um, try reducing the brake pressure. You, you probably save you a lot of grief. It's something that I only started doing like in the last few years despite sim racing for a century or so um just makes things a lot easier oh come on 10 minutes here you see the ai is now actually starting to punish us we've got a train behind us <laughs> sorry sorry i'm slow this car's getting into slides around here the um it's very easy with this ktm to uh accidentally put it in a slide over the limit and then you get sort of stuck in a bit of a over the limit slide that you can't really play with uh, if you watch the other video we did on the Chevrolet talk about how that car allows you to be a lot more aggressive with the input you get away with a lot more it's a lot less punishing this KTM is definitely 
I think out of all the GT4 cars, possibly uh, one of the uh, harder ones to drive. You, you really have to kind of approach it in a back to front way. Uh, the car, get the speed off and then the car really follows itself um, through the corners with the steering. Um, actually drives very similar to the non-GT4 version that's in the original Assetto Corsa. Really interesting challenge. Get it in there. Try and close this gap up a bit. Now we're pulling away now. Nicely as well in the set of course of Crumpet Zone is the um, the audio still sounds really good from the dash cam. Um, a lot of simulators have an issue where when you change from cam to cam you get different audio. I mean you would get different audio in real life, but from my perspective while I was playing this in this dash cam, I'm sat in my sim rig car seat is as if I'm sat in the car seat in the car. So I don't want the audio to be from where my virtual head is <laughs> i want it to be from where my real head is and uh that is definitely the case with the audio in this so good good job by uh, kunos for doing that um another thing that's worth saying is i i used to be a lot more picky with the camera getting the camera just right using those calculators as i say and dialing it in properly but i have to say if you've ever get a chance to play driving simulators with a vr headset it kind of makes it's kind of like hang on if i'm playing on a screen it's not going to be like it is in real life or it's not going to be like it is in vr and since playing in vr if i'm having to play a game on on a screen as opposed to a vr headset i i really just don't care about dialing it into what's supposed to be right because it's just it's never going to be what it's like in real life and it's never going to be like what it is in vr um I, I really, really, really hope that um, ACC does improve its VR performance. It, it has a little bit. It's never going to be ideal unless there's a massive update to the Unreal Engine and Kunos uh, incorporate that into the version of the Unreal Engine that ACC is. I, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Um, possibly, plus, possibly with the um, this coming up 30 series of NVIDIA cars and maybe even a year on, two years on, Maybe it'll get to a point where there'll be a way to, to finagle, finagle around it. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, if you're not in VR, like it's, it's never going to be, it's never going to be um, as literal. So these car settings, I think, are as good as it's going to get, or as good as I've managed to get them with a set of course of competition. I actually think also as well, if you've got the uh, camera further forwards on this dash, um, the game should also run a little bit better than if you're running in the cockpit view because there's uh, less stuff having to be rendered. It does depend on uh, how, how they program things and how they optimised it, but uh, generally you should gain a little bit of performance by running on the dash as opposed to cockpit. Um, also, often running a lower field of view can in some ways make things run faster. In some ways, it can make it run slower, but, you, you know, it swings and roundabouts. <laughs> you will probably notice with the lower field of view the uh, sh shadow popping, though, a little bit more than if you're running a wider field of view, but I'd take that compromise for the sake of having what f seems like visual, better visual car control from a field of view around about 40 or so, 42, 40, 45. I think you also get, um, with a lower field of view and having this dash view, as I say, you've got, you've got the lateral movement of the car, but you also have, uh, the, by being able to see the road texture more clearly, that also gives you the benefit of um, getting a better sense of speed, because what the, the thing that's going to be moving fast the camera, or your onboard position, the fastest, will be whatever's closest to the car. And on a racetrack, most of the things are the at the side of the track and quite far away from your camera like the armco the spectators unless you're driving into them are pretty far away from the camera whereas the road texture surface is the closest thing so being on in the dash you can see the road texture and kunos have done a fantastic job with the actual asphalt variability of textures like you can see where they patch the road up where the little bits of um asphalt uh the, where the where it's been resurfaced on bits of track 
and the track changes or where there's bits of tyre marks and everything. Those details are absolutely superb in ACC and they're the things that are going to be whizzing past the camera um, and you'll see the shadows as they're whizzing past the camera. It all gives you a much better sense of speed and makes the GT4 cars, which aren't the fastest of cars, though we are hitting, um, you know, you get up to like 200 and something down straights, but, you know, they're not the fastest of vehicles, but having those details whiz past you close to your camera help give a sense of speed and that also then makes it more obvious um, when you're braking it makes a sense of losing the speed and slowing down more obvious um, again make I think it makes it feel like the car's more responsive to your inputs um, so it's all little subtle things guys these little things add up together to make things better so despite putting the camera in a technically unrealistic place and, and uh, I think it actually ends up making it more realistic. Finally, <laughs> from using this view, I find it as well easier to see uh, the brake markers and hit brake points. So uh, that's handy because generally hitting brake points is pretty crucial to getting fast lap times. And uh, the brake marks are often quite quite hard to read in, in ACC. I think... Things, things into the distance in ACC can look a bit blurry, so anything that improves that uh, is a bonus. Uh, now, before we uh, finish this video, the only other thing I'd say is it's well worth, obviously, binding the MFD buttons. Probably should have said this earlier on in the video. Well worth binding the MFD button so you can uh, cycle through the on-screen stuff. I actually can't remember what I bound mine to because I've changed the... Uh, I just changed my settings recently. You've got um, you've you've got your actual your car display. You can you can bind to a button, so you can, you've normally got a couple of uh, options to bike to go through there um, with each different vehicle having that fully simulated. So it's going to depend on the actual specific car what screens you get there. But in terms of like the um, opponent race position and stuff, I highly recommend having that on the screen and being able to flick through it because you know it's very useful to know how close the car behind you is and how far away you are from the car in front. Um, give you clues to if you should be pushing or not. <laughs> but have that bound to a button so you can flick through it and then uh, obviously for when you're doing pit stops and stuff, having all that bound is certainly handy. I, I mean, I've totally failed here because I've not actually... Uh... There we go. Change my buttons. You can obviously, if you've got like a Fantech wheel, you've got the joystick there. But even with the uh, Thrustmaster wheels and the Logitech wheel, uh, you've got like a D-pad on them. So you can uh, go through all your pit settings and everything. Make sure that's all bound. Um, and if you've got limited numbers of buttons on your steering wheel, the nice thing with having this uh, display uh, activated is you can flick through stuff like ABS and traction control or quickly see what everything is set to without having to... You know, you only need that one button plus the, the uh, four-way controller and you can then control everything on the car as opposed to having to map everything to individual buttons. So that is very handy and will <laughs> get you out of trouble if you, especially if you're in a multiplayer race and you've, you're like, oh, you've realised you've forgotten to bind something, which totally never happens to me at all. Uh, I, I always have everything prepared and ready. Right, I think we're coming up to the second to last lap here. This has been a, <laughs> a nice trundle drive. And I think the next video that we'll do in terms of uh, going over settings and options in Assetto Corsa Competizione will be on... Um, I, I'm going to do some force feedback videos. Um, I keep getting asked. I do have a Fanatec CSL Elite. I also have a Thrustmaster T300. And, of course, we've got the Fanatec Podium DD here. So we can go through some force feedback settings. Uh, I don't... Unfortunately, I don't have a Logitech G29, so I can't do that. But that'll probably be our next car setup video. So look out for that. That's going to be exciting. That's, that's one that you can... Uh, you'll be able to talk to uh, girls about that. They, they love a bit of force feedback talk. Go down to the bar, tell them how you set up your, uh, how you reduce clipping and the importance of not having clipping and uh, 
the importance of good force feedback from your driving simulators. That kind of talk really arouses the ladies, I can tell you from personal experience. But 13th out of 21. As you can see, the guys in front pulled away from us, so maybe I should have put the uh, AI on a little bit of an easier setting with this car on this track. But hopefully, guys, hopefully that's uh, a useful video for you. And uh, let me know in the comments if you have any other tips and tricks that other people would like to use um, for, for camera settings, as that's what this video is about. You probably don't, but I'm sure some people do, and I'm sure some people will tell us how we've set things up totally wrong and why I'm an idiot. Um, good on you. <laughs> Until the next one, guys. Happy tea drinking. Subscribe and like. Goodbye.